In their conventional theoretical models, our present electrical power system scientists and engineers do not even include the vacuum interaction or the dipole's extraction of M energy from the vacuum. They simply ignore and do not model what is really powering every electrical system they build. Consequently, we reiterate that our electrical scientists have never even discovered how an electromagnetic circuit is powered, although it has been discovered and known for nearly 50 years in particle physics. All the hydrocarbons ever burned, all the water over all the dams ever built, all the nuclear fuel rods ever expended and all the nuclear power plants added not a single watt to the power line. Instead, all that expense, effort, and pollution and destruction of the biosphere was and is necessary in order to keep adding internal energy to the generator so that it can keep continually rebuilding its source dipole that is continually destroyed by the inane circuits that the power system scientists and engineers keep designing and building for us. The heart of the present environmental pollution problem is the ever-increasing need for electrical energy obtained from burning of hydrocarbon fuels and or nuclear power stations. The increasing production of electrical power to fill the rising needs increasingly pollutes the environment including the populace itself, lungs, bodies, etc. Almost every species on earth is affected. Environmental pollution includes pollution of the soil, fresh and salt water, and the atmosphere by a variety of waste products. Under present procedures, the electrical energy problem is exacerbated by decreasing available oil supplies, with projected declines from now on. But really, the electrical energy problem is due to the scientific community's adamant defense and use of electrical power system models and theories that are 136 years old, in their very foundations. These models and theories are riddled with errors and non-sequiturs and seriously flawed. The scientific community has not even recognized the problem, much less the solution. In fact, it does not even intend to recognize the problem, even though the basis for it has been known in particle physics for nearly 50 years. As Bungie put it some decades ago, it is not usually acknowledged that electrodynamics, both classical and quantal, are in a sad state. The scientific community has done little to correct that fundamental problem since Bungie made his rise statement. Let us put it very simply, the most modern theory today is modern gauge field theory. In that theory, freedom of gauge is assumed from the get-go, Applied to electrodynamics, this means, as all electrodynamicists have assumed for the last century or longer that the potential energy of an EM system can be freely changed at will. In other words, in theory it costs nothing at all to increase the EM energy collected in a system, this is merely changing the voltage, which does not require power. In other words, we can excite the system with excess energy, actually taken from the vacuum, at will, for free. And the best science of the day agrees with that statement. It also follows that we can freely change the excitation energy again, at will. In short, we can dissipate that excess energy freely, and at will, without cost. Well, this means that we are free, by the laws of nature, physics, thermodynamics, and gauge field theory, to dissipate that free excess potential energy, in an external load, thus doing free work. Since none of the systems our energy scientists and engineers build for us are doing that, it follows a priori, that the fault lies entirely in their own system design and building, it does not lie in any prohibition by nature or the laws of physics. A priori then, the present COP less than one performance of our electrical power systems is a monstrosity and the direct fault of our scientists and engineers. We cannot blame the laws of nature or the laws of physics. The present energy crisis then is due totally to that conspiracy of ignorance we referred to. It is maintained by the scientific community today, and it has been maintained by it for more than 100 years. This is the real situation that the environmentalists must become aware of if they are to see the correct path into which their energies and efforts should be directed to solve both the energy crisis and the problem of gigantic pollution of the biosphere. As a result, the environmental community has failed to grasp the technical reason for the energy crisis and the increasing pollution of the biosphere. They have been deceived and manipulated into thinking that conventional organized science is giving them the very best technical advice possible on electrical power systems. The environmentalists have been and are further deceived into believing that the conventional scientific community is advocating and performing the best possible scientific studies and developments for trying to solve the energy crisis. Of major importance, the environmental community itself has been deceived as to the exact nature of the energy flow in and around a circuit, the vastness of the unaccounted energy flow, or even that any of the energy flow is deliberately unaccounted, and the fact that this present but unaccounted EM energy flow can be intercepted and captured for use in powering loads and developing self-powering systems. Worst of all, the environmental community has been deceived as to what powers every electrical load and EM circuit. 
They have been deceived into believing that burning all those hydrocarbons, using those nuclear fuel rods, building those dams and windmills, and putting out solar cell rays are necessary, and the best that can be done. In short, they have been smoothly diverted from solving the very problem, the problem of the increasing pollution and destruction of the biosphere, they are striving to rectify. However, their continued demonstrations in the street demonstrate that many environmentalists now suspect that much of the world's continued policy of the rich get richer and the poor get poorer in international trade agreements are deliberately planned and implemented. They perceive the implementation to the advantage of the favored financial class and the exploitation of the poorer laboring classes in disadvantaged nations. So we do not have an energy problem, per se, we have an unwitting conspiracy of scientific ignorance problem. We have a scientific mindset problem, scientific negligence, and electromagnetics dogma of epic proportions. I refer to this as an unwitting conspiracy of ignorance. Because of its bias, our electrical scientific community also strongly resists updating the 136-year-old electrodynamics foundations even though much of it is known to be seriously flawed and even incorrect. Arthur C. Clarke expressed it succinctly for our more modern scientific community as follows. If the quantum fluctuations of vacuum can be tapped the impact upon our civilization will be incalculable. Oil, coal, nuclear, hydropower would become obsolete and so would many of our worries about environmental pollution. Our present organized scientific community will strongly resist funding of a vigorous program to gather all this proven, known physics together and rapidly use it to change and update, modernize the terribly flawed theory and the design of electrical power systems. Most scientists attempting to do this research have had to proceed on their own. If we wish to survive, government will have to directly force the scientific community to do the job, over careers and dead bodies so to speak, if necessary. But first the government itself must be motivated to do so. Let us cut through the scientific errors in how electrical power systems are presently viewed. Batteries and generators themselves do not power circuits. They never have and they never will. They dissipate their available internal energy to do one thing and one thing only, forcibly separate their own internal charges to form a source dipole. Once the dipole has been formed, the dipole directly extracts electromagnetic energy from the active vacuum, pouring the extracted EM energy out from the terminals of the battery or generator. Batteries and generators make a dipole, nothing else. All the fuel ever burned, the nuclear fuel rods ever consumed, and chemical energy ever expended by batteries did nothing but make dipoles. None of all that destructive activity of itself ever added a single watt to the power line. Once made, the dipole then extracts EM energy from the seething vacuum and pours it out down the circuit and through all surrounding space around the circuit. A little bit of that energy flow strikes the circuit and enters it by being deflected, diverged, into the wires. That tiny bit of intercepted energy flow that is diverged into the circuit then powers the circuit, your home. All the rest of that huge energy flow around the circuit just roars on off into deep space and is wasted. Only the tiny bit of the energy flow that is actually diverged into the wires is used to power the circuit and the loads. All the rest of the enormous energy flow present and available outside the circuit is just ignored and wasted. A nominal 1 watt generator, for example, is actually one whose external circuit can catch only 1 watt of its output. The generator's actual total output in the great flow which fills all space around the external circuit and is not intercepted and used is something on the order of 10 trillion watts. Here is the most inane thing of all. Precisely half of the small amount of energy that is actually caught by the circuit is used to destroy the dipole. That half of the intercepted energy does not power the load, nor does it power losses in the external circuit. Instead, it is used to directly scatter the dipole charges and destroy the dipole. Our scientists and engineers have given us the ubiquitous closed current loop circuit, which destroys the dipole faster than it powers the load. In short, the scientists and engineers design and build only those electrical power systems that continuously commit suicide by continuously destroying the source dipole, that is extracting the vacuum energy and emitting it out along the circuit to power everything in the first place. So now, we have the real picture. Every electrical load ever powered and every load powered today has been and is powered by electromagnetic energy extracted directly from the seething vacuum by the source dipole in the generator or battery. However, our scientists and engineers design and build electrical power systems that only intercept and use a tiny fraction of the vast electromagnetic energy flow available. They also only design and build systems that destroy their source dipole faster than they power their loads.
If one does not destroy the dipole, once it is made, it will continue to freely extract copious electromagnetic energy flow from the vacuum indefinitely, pouring out a stupendous flow of EM energy. For free. This is what freaked out JP Morgan when he pulled Tesla's funding saying where's the meter? Or how can I make money on free electricity? The energy problem is not due to the inability to produce copious EM energy flows at will, as much as one wishes, anywhere, anytime. Every dipole already does this, including in every EM power system ever built. The energy problem is due to the complete failure to intercept and utilize more of the vast energy flows made available by the common dipole, and doing so without using the present inanely designed circuits. These circuits use half their collected energy to destroy the dipole that is extracting the energy flow from the vacuum in the first place. This requires the continuous consumption of hydrocarbon fuel, oil, gas and nuclear to keep the generators running to keep the electricity on, and to keep the money flowing into big energy pockets. This free electricity technology has been systematically suppressed for decades. Please check the links below. And thanks for watching.